All right, so if you want to get bigger arms, the best place to start is by simply making sure you're performing both ends of every single repetition you're doing on every exercise. We're talking about not skipping the eccentric because that is where a lot of the gains can be had. If you look at a basic curl, we know that we're lifting the weight up, but it's also just as important to focus on slowing it down on the way down because eccentrically, there's a lot of opportunity here for growth. The beauty about focusing on the eccentric during a curl or any pulling exercise is that you have a built-in safety factor. If I get too tired to be able to control the weight on the way down, it's simply just going to be dropped down to the floor. It's not going to come crashing down on top of me like it would, let's say, in a bench press. So I can allow for a little bit of extra momentum concentrically when I'm getting fatigued and still have the ability to control eccentrically a few more repetitions to push it just where we need to to create that overload and growth. Or I can do this, and this is something I included in my Soren 6 workout for biceps. It's just an adaptive curl. I perform the initial concentric from a seated position, then I just go back into this incline position where I can have a longer excursion, a greater stretch, more eccentric overload, and I continue to push myself even further for more gains. Now we don't have to leave the triceps out either. We have a great opportunity to do this with the lying tricep extension because we have a couple things happening here. Number one, we have a greater effect on the long head of the triceps because we're putting our arm in a greater position for stretch. So that gives us that better opportunity for eccentric overload. But if we get too tired here, and we can't do this anymore, we also have an adaptation here, and that's simply to sort of cheat yourself back to an easier version of the exercise, which would be a close grip bench press. And then once we get to the top concentrically, then we lower back down again as we traditionally would on the line tricep extension. So there's some obvious places here, guys, to eccentrically overload. You just have to make sure that you're not forgetting to do it. Remember, half the repetition, guys, is still half the repetition. So now while eccentric focus training allows us to use those heavier weights and at the same time create that additional overload to create new size, that doesn't mean that if we want to go more strict in our repetition in our form that we have to sacrifice the ability to use relatively heavy weights. Take a look here at the strict curl. So this requires that you put your back and your butt up against the wall and you do not allow them to leave at any point during your curl. This is a great opportunity here to force the work to be performed strictly by the biceps, right? We're not allowing any momentum, but it doesn't mean that we can't still have a relatively heavy load. Yes, it's less than what you can curl, but it still is a great load on the biceps, particularly here because the biceps are handling all of that load. And we can take the same principles and apply them to the triceps with this incline overhead dumbbell extension. You simply lay back against an incline bench and anchor your back to that bench throughout the entire rep. The same as a strict curl, you're not going to allow yourselves to lean forward and gain momentum to try to get that dumbbell up. You have to rely on the strength purely of the triceps to do that. So with that back firmly planted up against the bench, you want to get those elbows slightly out in front of your body to protect your shoulders and then simply extend your elbows as far out as they can. The goal is to once again use as heavy a dumbbell as you can to perform this exercise to cause that growth and force the new growth that's not occurring right now, but not to divert from the form restrictions that we put in place by making this more strict version of the overhead dumbbell tricep extension. And we can do one more thing as well. I like this as just an overhead push away, modified. A lot of people perform this exercise and they use a lot of body sway in order to get that rope out away from the body. But again, if we want to make sure that the triceps are doing the work and still be able to handle a relatively heavy load, we would want to get our arms up as high as we possibly can. Because what's going to happen here is if you try to utilize any type of cheat, and you allow yourself to bend backwards in preparation of leaning forward, you're going to lose the stability through your core and probably wind up falling backwards. So you keep your arms up high and simply look to extend the elbows with just the brute force and strength of your triceps. All right, so the next thing you want to do when you want to build bigger arms is you want to make sure you're training your brachialis. And you probably said, I've heard that before. You know, it's the muscle that lies underneath the biceps, you got to push it up. And yes, but you got to make sure you're training your brachialis heavy. Because perhaps here, more than any other muscle of your arm, you have the opportunity to train with heavier exercises because it's not just the brachialis that works. It is a primary elbow flexor, but we also get help from the biceps and we also get help from the brachioradialis. So you want to take advantage of the fact that those muscles are working synergistically to give you the chance to lift more. So don't just relegate these exercises to the end of your workouts. Like a hammer curl. A lot of people will say, I'm just going to do a few sets after I've done all of my primary bicep work. But if arm size is your problem right now, you better start from the inside and work out. And that's where the brachialis becomes your main focus. So instead of just grabbing those light weights, try to lift heavier and heavier weights, perform repetitions in the five to eight rep range on an exercise like that. And don't forget that it's not just relegated to the curling exercises. One of the best ways to build the muscles of your upper arm is with an exercise like the pull-up. 
Yes, you're going to hit the brachialis here, and yes, you're going to hit the brachioradialis, which we're going to come back to in a second, but it's doing so and utilizing your body weight, which is a great form of overload. But the point is brachialis, yes, but are you training brachialis hard enough and heavy enough? Probably not. Which brings us to another important point, and that is you don't want to use your body weight exercises as simply burnout exercises because they're capable of so much more if you just realize that you can load them. So you can take an exercise like the chin up and simply throw a weighted vest on and now you've got an opportunity for tension overload to force new muscle growth as opposed to simply adding repetitions to a weight you can already handle. Metabolic stress is a way to build muscle, but if you're at a dead end right now, you're likely not creating enough tension and this gives us a chance. And you don't have to have a way to vest. One of my favorite ways is to simply utilize a dog leash for your dip belt and you're off and running. Now we can take this to another exercise entirely because maybe chin ups just isn't your thing. And this is the inverted chin curl. And essentially what we do is we take another bodyweight exercise, throw that vest on and overload it and we've got a bodyweight version of a curl. You see, instead of curling the bar up to your body, you're basically curling your body to the bar with the elbows in that same end position, bent at around 90 degrees and again elevated slightly into shoulder flexion to ensure that you're getting a good peak bicep contraction. But it's not limited just to biceps. We have so many different things we can do for the triceps, lots of different push-up variations. One of my favorite is the tricep cobra push-up. And this here again can utilize that weighted vest or someone can simply push down on your back if you're not training with any equipment at all but you have a partner around to create additional overload and force that you have to push through that takes that ordinary burnout exercise that you're relegating it to and create something that's capable of delivering new muscle growth. Which brings me to my next point and that is if you want to get bigger arms you realize that arm size doesn't just stop here but it goes down here too. And we need to fill in the gap with this muscle right here that I mentioned called the brachioradialis. The good news is we have a lot of ways that we can train it effectively. In order to do this, we need to have that muscle get into a pronated position to discourage the contribution of the biceps and the brachialis to the move. The more pronated, the more this muscle will do the work. And we can also do this by getting our elbows flexed as much as we possibly can. So the first place we could actually turn is an odd exercise, but it works really, really well and it utilizes a lap pull down machine. You can see that by having my arms up in this position, I can get a fully pronated hands down grip on the bar and then when I bend my elbows, I don't get stopped by my chest like I would with a normal reverse curl. I can take that elbow flexion back even further behind my head. So I get a bigger excursion, more range of motion, more load and more growth. But if we want to stick to the more traditional options, we have a couple choices. The first is the offset dumbbell curl. And by offsetting the hand here, we actually get an overload into pronation. Right? Remember I said that pronation is part of what this muscle does. So as we curl up and flex the elbow, we have to overload that pronation and overcome the pronation to get there. So we give ourselves a chance to focus the load a little bit more on that brachioradialis and away from the brachialis and biceps. If you want to take this even a little bit more traditionally, then we can just simply use an easy curl bar. But instead of going completely face down like this in a fully pronated position, we now cheat it a little bit up, a little bit more to the supinated grip with the purpose being that you want now the additional help from the biceps so that you can handle more load. Look, being in this neutral to somewhat pronated position is always going to be more of a brachioradialis exercise, but because we have a little bit more help, we can increase that load and if the tension overloads what you're looking for, that is the way you're going to want to get it. Now obviously when you're trying to build bigger arms, focusing on what we could do to build the entire arm up from that forearm up to the triceps and biceps is important. But what's even more critical is what you do outside the gym and that is the quality of your nutrition, specifically the amount of protein that you're eating because without that you're not going to support the muscle growth you're after. For instance, the bare minimum amount of protein that you should be ingesting in a day is 0.36 grams per pound of body weight which would give you 65 grams in a day at 180 pounds. However, when your goal is to actually build muscle and to do it quickly, those numbers go up substantially, now into a range of 0.7 grams to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. That is now 126 grams to 216 grams per day at that same 180 pound body weight. Now of course, looking at whole food options for getting your protein is where you should start and form the foundation of your protein intake. However, even then, a lot of us just don't get enough. And that's where I believe a protein powder comes in very handy. And for me, there's none better than Athenarx Pro 30G. Why? 
because I created it, and I created it to make sure it was the best. A full 30 grams of protein per serving at 28 servings per bag. It's only 6.5 cents per serving, giving you a very cost-effective way to reach your daily protein totals. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, make sure to leave your comments and thumbs up below. If you're looking for an arm workout to try, you can try this one right here. If you haven't done so, click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.